A beautiful baby girl has been born into this world in the corner of a room. The baby girl's mother, Lola, cleaned up the birth nest before turning to nuzzle her head against the wonderful gift of life. Doing so, her senses are pleasantly filled with the scent of a newborn child. Her heart is filled with happiness as she gazes into her daughter's eyes. The baby girl is the only thing that her mother has to be happy about. You will not be like the rest, my dear. I will protect you and let no harm come to you. I would give my life up for you, her young mother said softly with a tear dripping down the side of her cheek as she tried to stay strong. I'll name you Hope for hope of a better life. She laid a kiss upon her daughter's forehead. She guided her tired young to her tattered teeth, covered in bruises and infected scabs, to allow her a drink from the blood-encrusted area. This isn't life, Hope. Soon we will escape out of this hell. When I close my eyes, I hope to wake up realizing this was all a nightmare, but as I open my eyes again, I wake back to the horrid reality, the grievous, heart-wrenching reality. The windowless concrete building's main room is occupied by 40 other young women, including Lola, who have recently given birth within the past two years. The women are all lined up in two rows, each in a small metal jail with an open middle row for the killers to walk down. On the ceiling, industrialized light fixtures hang emitting a low droning noise. Three days pass of the horrendous conditions before the two-legged beast arrive. He snatched Hope away, throwing her into a large wheel bin filled with five other few old day babies. Her lungs filled with anger, she screeched out, My baby! The beast screeched out the word, Shut up, you dumb bitch! He took a hot steel rod and burned her spotted skin. Lola bellowed out in agony as her body flailed in pain. He scoffed. I don't even know why you care anymore. You'll be dead soon anyways. She cried, striking her legs back against the metal bars profusely with all her might to get out of the metal jail until she broke down sobbing. For days, a hopeless cry echoed through the bleak building from Lola. Herring cries of help could be heard from a distance by other broken souls that occupied the death scented vicinity. The man in white took her to the rest of the woman and placed the teacups onto her bruised and scab-covered breasts to do what he enslaved her to do, produce milk at an unnatural rate. The machine pumped up and down for hours in an enclosed area so small that she couldn't even turn around. A year passed as Lola continued to be tortured and used. Her body growing very sickly, she barely had the vigor to stand. A tumor had formed in her soft, fleshy underside, which made it unbearably painful to be milked. The man in white arrived to the room that kept the woman and Lola locked in. Her soulless eyes took a good look at Lola as her body coursed with fear. Well, shit, look at you. Looks like you're all used up, aren't you? Looks like some of your friends are ready to go, too. Get up, dumb shit. He pulled out the jail door and grabbed her by the piece of fabric around her neck, forcefully pulling her out and up to her feet. He took a whip and harshly whacked it against her thigh, bruising the area to get her moving. She jumped in pain and forced her any strength she had left to walk. He led her down the hall of death. Hope looked up at her mother with extreme sadness and anger, knowing what's coming. She couldn't bear it. Lola was so hopeless at the point she dragged her body along with his orders. She'd seen hundreds of women take this walk of death, to never return. The man in white placed Lola in constraint. He sharpened his knife back and forth. He dove the knife into her fleshy soft neck and pulled across quickly, sending buckets of blood to gush out of her carotid artery and pool on the floor. Her body flailed about as she sent out the most gut-wrenching scream one could ever hear as pain coursed through her every being. He hooked up a cord to her leg to dangle a corpse in the air. While she suspended in midair, he cut his skin away from her flesh and dragged the knife down her stomach, pulling out her guts. He sent her on a line with other corpses to have machines cut, chop, and package their flesh for consumption. The young daughter knew too well the sound of her mother's screams. I won't let you take them, Mommy. I won't. I can't. We have to stop this, the young girl cried out in mourning of her mother. You wanted to protect me, but no one could protect you. Her eyes were bloodshot with extreme sorrow. One of the elders spoke out to all the women. Next week, this will end. We must work together for my plan to work. Hope, I know where they'll be taking your mother. Next week, the man in white walked down the aisle for standard protocol, taking a whip against his hand. 
time to get your fat asses to slaughter. A few of the females nodded heads at each other to signal. He guided a few of them in a row before he knew it, he was being completely mauled. Two of the others went to take off the shackles of the suppressed souls. They heard other workers coming. Run for it, one exclaimed as they all ran quickly for the door that was left open to the outside world. Meanwhile, in town, two young adults were sitting inside a restaurant. Oh damn, don't you just love a good juicy steak? This is local too, the waitress told me said one of the men, biting into the cooked flesh. It goes really good with some cold milk, too, said the man with a large mouthful before he took a swig out of the tall glass. Well, I know I love me some good burgers, said the woman, taking a disgustingly large mouthful of the food. Suddenly, the restaurant door swung open, smashing against the walls. A group of 30 females followed behind Hope as she saw the meat. You're eating my mother, Hope cried out. The couple looked down at their plates, then back up at the cattle's beaten bodies. What are you talking about? Hope proceeded to tell the painful sort and true conditions of how they are kept. Tears flooded the customer's eyes as their hearts were opened to the hidden horror. The man who was eating the steak pushed it off the table onto the ground with raging sadness. I'm sorry, we had no idea. I had never questioned what I was eating or how it got to my plate. The man went over to attempt to wrap his arms around Hope in a reassuring hug. Hope looked at him with fear in her eyes and quickly jumped back. Don't touch me, she exclaimed. He gently walked closer to her and went down to her level. Don't worry, I won't hurt you like those horrible people did. You can trust me. He lightly rubbed her on the shoulders. Hope's eyes teared up, feeling the loving touch of someone for the first time in her life. We can't let this happen anymore. Something has to change. We have to free the rest of the caged souls and tell everyone about this dreadful practice. I'm never eating this food again. But first, we need to get you all cared for. You're in critical condition. The females herded off to be taken care of by the wonderful couple and their children, nursed back to health and given the love that they've never been able to experience before. They saw the bright blue sky and the feeling of grass between their feet, an unfamiliar but amazing experience for every sense in their bodies to take in. They went to talk around the United States in newscasts, interviews, and their message was spreading like wildfire. Slaughterhouses were shutting down left and right as their message became larger. Demand for rotting flesh was at an all-time low. The beings once occupied the death chambers were now living with caring families and volunteers who nursed them back to health. Stores were stocking up with many more meat, cheese, and egg alternatives, as well as more varieties of fresh fruits, grains, legumes, and vegetables. Rates of obesity, heart disease, cancer, and cholesterol, diabetes were at, also on a rapid decline. I thought I would never be loved or feel a love in physical contact. Many of us have never seen the sun rise or have what thought to see the sunset. We were led to murder and abused without any medical care. As I cut my mother's skin, I wondered who would care. Her screams were unheard but pierced my ears. Was there anyone out there that would understand or despair? People don't see behind closed doors. They don't understand what we go through for the meat you do not need. People tried to disconnect from their food, not wanting to hear from the horror as they blindly eat it again. So we spread this message to you, finally having our voice heard for the first time ever. Please think about our experience and our loved one's brutal experience in the industrialized dairy industry egg industry, and slaughterhouses before you take a bite out of that flesh. This is our voice, the animal's voice. Be sure to leave your comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you like this video. I put out new videos every week. And for awesome recipes, check out my website at therawbuzz.com.